Hey everybody, it's Norm from Tested. And Sean from Tested. Sean, you have now set up our new universal laser system, laser cutter in our workshop. Yeah, we did a test cut, great. And uh, so this is the VLS 660 that they have on loan. It's a 60 watt laser. And we need to do something fun and complicated. So we have a friend. Yes, Jen Schachter. The perfect project. The perfect project. <laughs> Jen was an artist in residence here uh, working with Adam on a project. And she, for South by Southwest this year, designed this incredible puzzle. It's, yeah. like a, it's to celebrate maker community and the maker culture. It's this nine piece layer by layer puzzle that mm -hmm. she prototyped here, collaborated with Adam to get some input on design, but really, did the whole design herself. And it's amazing. Did this so amazing thing. Uh, they did a treasure hunt, mm -hmm. a scavenger hunt at South by Southwest. But that design is now public. It's yeah. in Thingiverse, you can download it. If you have access to a laser cutter yourself, you can take a stab at making your own, customizing it, remixing it. And so that's what we wanna do. We want to make our version of that puzzle for the tested office. Yeah. And it's and she did many many layers and there's a lot of different processes involved. So there's vector cutting, so actually just cutting parts out. There's vector etching, which is just etching the lines in. And there's even raster, which is kind of the when you get like a lot of like burn in or or uh, engraved type of stuff. So we're gonna cover all the bases and their original ones were done just in wood. We're mm -hmm. gonna mix it up. We got some fun uh, acrylics and colors and some coated stuff to try to kind of give it little pops of color. Now so. it's a project that's gonna take more than just the scope of this one video mm. to do because yeah. it's a pretty complicated piece to cut out and then assemble. Mm -hmm. But that's gonna let us actually over the course of the series uh, try different things with a laser cutter, uh, explain the use of a laser cutter, things yeah. that you've learned from using this, um, and also make something in the end that's gonna be really cool. It's gonna actually fit together because it's a puzzle. Yeah. Um, so today we're gonna take our stab at making the first piece of the puzzle. But before we get started putting materials in, we know a lot of you out there had some concerns about the way we set this up in our shots. shots. Yeah, yeah, yeah we and appreciate your concerns. So this is a good opportunity to talk about what we have set up safety wise and laser safety in general. So obviously this is a class one laser so it can burn you and blind you, uh, all bad things. So it's got the top that the, the radiation is not getting through so we're safe with that obviously. Yep. And it has inner locks designed into it that if we open this it's gonna turn off, we're not gonna get zapped or anything like that. Uh, there's concern about our ventilation. So we have this gigantic BOFA uh, filter unit that was specifically paired with our laser cutter. So this is uh, has multiple stage filtration. Uh, it, is class, it is classified for VOCs, so volatile organic compounds, and it has a 75 pound filter of activated carbon and activated aluminum permanganate wow. for filtering all that stuff. Yep. Um, and we also have fresh air available as if, you know, if we need that as well, to, you know, because even with the filter, when you open this up, you're gonna get some smell out. Uh, so we are running this whenever we need to at 500 CFM. Um, so we got plenty of ventilation and it has a, a, a elaborate warning system, you know. And we, we also have yeah. detectors. Yeah. Carbon monoxide detectors. Carbon, carbon monoxide detectors. We have our fire extinguisher standing by. So we have taken the necessary precautions to be safe and so should you. And, you know, no cutting PVC or things that put off deadly gases. And that's the whole thing of <laughs> what type of materials you can cut because yeah. the, the laser cutter doesn't know what you're putting in. That's mm -hmm. gonna be on you to be familiar mm -hmm. with materials and us to know that yes, we can engrave wood, we can cut through wood, we can cut through acrylic, but something like PVC, ABS, mm -hmm. We don't want to do that. Yeah, and don't be the guy who is engraving bic lighters with his layers of graver oh, no. and blew up his garage. Yeah. Yeah. We will <laughs> so, not definitely right. not be that guy. So, so today we're going to be doing a variety of woods, uh, uh, laminated ply plywoods, and we're going to be doing some acrylics. Awesome. Yeah. And the file we download, like I said, the information is below. If you want to, even if you don't have access to a laser cutter, to follow along to see what files we're working with, see how Sean's kind of laid it out to be cut on one sheet of ply, yeah. and then we will be assembling that. So let's get to look at the files, putting our material into the bed, mm -hmm. and getting cutting. Yeah. All right, so here uh, we have all of the files that Jen uploaded to Thingiverse. So that, which was very nice of her, because this was a ton of work. And they're more or less laid out for laser cutting as is, but we had to do a few tweaks because every laser cutter works a little differently as far as the layout. So these, are Jen's original file. She has a, a, a master 
that she color coded so you can see all the different layers. So each color is a different layer that we glue on. Uh, and then she broke out each layer into a separate one. So you have the, the base layer. Uh, there are some marks that are engravings, some that are etchings, uh, and some that are cuts. So we just go layer by layer. So what I had to do in the case of Universal is I had to remove this fill color. And then I also had to um, make a specific stroke weight and stroke color, which tells the software what to do. Because these are all SVGs, they're vector files, mm -hmm. but the laser cutter, you treat it like almost like a, a printer. You're sending it information based on, like you said, the stroke weight and the color, and it'll recognize the color of this, le this line will be a cut line if it's a certain color right. and a certain thickness. So here, so this is our first piece of wood. Uh, we're doing the first few layers in a maple. Okay, so uh, I laid out any ones that would be the same color wood on the same uh, uh, sheet. I removed the fill color, and then I've assigned the red lines are indicate cutting, and then the blue lines are going to be uh, just a marking. There are guides to glue the other pieces on, and I see one here that's a, the wrong color I'll fix. And then the black are going to be uh, raster, which is going to just uh, burn into the wood and make it uh, dark. I just lay them all out on the size wood that we have, and we're going to send this to the laser cutter. So we got our... Uh, we have the 18 by 32 bed, so it's laid out here, and I already know my material size, so that's good, and we have it up in the upper left corner. We're going to go to the settings. This is my favorite thing about this, because having used a lot of different laser cutters, you always have to guess speed and power, and this has this amazing database, so we can, we can just go in and pick what we're cutting. You can, it's amazing, you can just go through all this. So I think we have a, a maple up first, our maple uh, ply. And then we're gonna go down here, and let's see here, maple. And we're gonna enter our material thickness, so we have a 1 8 inch. And we're gonna apply that. And then, for the most part, all the other settings are gonna be taken care of. We have for the engraving, the cutting, and the raster. And I have found that the settings out of the database have worked well for almost everything, so we're just gonna go with it. And now we're ready to fire up the laser cutter. All right, Nora. All right. Ooh, that yeah. looks so good. I'm very happy with that. And it's very fast. I think my favorite thing is watching the laser etching, which are these just thin lines, which are the markers for where the pieces go. It goes so fast and it sounds really cool and it does it too. All right. <laughs> so, so, yeah, let's so we've vended. Uh, we're good to go here. Open the lid here. Mm -hmm. And it's very clear. Yeah, three passes. First pass was the engrave, took the longest, mm -hmm. which is all that. You can see a, lot a of burn little bit of burn scorch, yeah. scorch marks because we don't have any sheet protecting here. Yeah. So yeah, and the scorching, now normally a trick to do is you put uh, masking tape down over the top of it mm -hmm. and that will prevent scorching. Um, we just, right now we didn't have the big masking, so next time we'll do that. Uh, but the, the settings are so tuned in, there's minimal scorching. Mm. And it's only on the raster stuff. And uh, hit that with a little sandpaper, we'll be good to go. So the real trick is uh, let, let's lift it up, see, and, and see if all these little pieces fall out. <laughs> all right, let's see if it cut all the way through. Oh, Beautiful. sweet. Got one screw, but I think that's just stuck friction-wise. Boop. Yeah, there you go. There you go. So, wow. Yeah. That already gives me a sense of how much assembly this is gonna take, because if you what imagine, you these are just three layers. <laughs> all of these pieces fit on top of here. That gets put on top here, and then there are more cuts, yeah. more passes we have to do. But you can see, like, even look at like things like this. You can see the teeth on this Japanese saw. That is crazy. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, Sean. All the pieces for puzzle piece one mm -hmm. have now been laser cut. 
technically it's Puzzle Piece 5. Puzzle Piece 5. We're not going in order, uh -oh. but that's okay. It was still uh, our but favorite it, one. It had a Lego on it, so we had to, yeah. yeah. So How many total individual cutout pieces are there uh, here? It's over 55. I kind of did a rough count. It's, it's well over 55. Um, but everything cut really nicely. Jen did an amazing job on this. I particularly like the etching lines to show you where the line of everything on the, the yeah. top piece. So we're, like to recap quickly, there are three different types of passes that mm -hmm. one on each of these layers. Uh, there's the raster, which gives you really nice engraves, mm -hmm. a really, th how, how, a really thick, um, and that did a whole pass. And then there's the vector engrave, the vector etch. Which are the real fine lines. Yes. Yeah. And they don't go all the way through, and that's being used here for registration. Uh -huh. uh, and then, of course, cutting uh, the whole thing out. Um, and it's so clean, it's such a fast yeah. process for us, our laser. Uh, but of course, there's gonna be the assembly. Yeah, and we also, we should point out that uh, um, we had talked earlier about the fact that you'd normally like put some tape or something over top, which prevents scorching. In fact, we have one of the Lego pieces here that uh, it has the paper backing on it. And we left that on because it prevents scorching on the, the plastic and protects it and then you peel it off afterwards. Now we didn't have that on the wood. So you can see, but the settings are so close, there's very minimal. Mm -hmm. So what I find, I just use some uh, fine grit sandpaper. And if you just like hit these spots really quick, I'm not gonna do the whole thing, but you get the idea. And then just a little brush off here. Yeah. You know, it really cleans up, and I did this half already, right. and so it doesn't take much at all to get it. Oh, that got rid of it completely. It yeah. doesn't take off the finish of at least this yeah. sheet of wood. Um, again, that's a testament to their catalog of the material database. Yeah, um, and it's really aligned to this material, which you know we just bought it. The, I think the only tweak that I had to do was um, the paper that was on this acrylic seemed a little thicker than what I'd normally see. And to get the etching on the Lego pieces, I had to up the uh, the um, the raster power a little bit, mm -hmm. but that was no big deal. So our remix of this puzzle piece design is using not just wood. So we use uh, blue acrylic, and we're having an accent piece mm -hmm. for each. Um, do we have a second accent piece? Oh yeah, I found this stuff that I really wanted to try out. This is uh, dual layer acrylic. Mm. So it has a really thin layer of yellow on top, and then the core is black. So basically burn through the top layer, due to the, it's the uh, screwdriver handle. So I thought that was another nice little touch. Now this is a, these are a different power. So this is like a lower setting. It didn't quite go the whole way through the yellow. And this is a, a really heavy setting. So it like really made the black pop. I like the, I like this one, I think. And to put it all together, you could use wood glue. We're actually, just for expedience sake, we're gonna use super glue. See how it works. will yeah. totally work. Uh, but with over 55 pieces to put together, Let's I think let's turn on that time-lapse cam and get to building. And go. Look at that. It's beautiful. It is so awesome. Yeah. Um, very inspired choice, getting the acrylic pieces. I like that, yeah, the little pop. Yeah, pops of color, of color, and in building the future puzzle pieces, there are eight more of them. Mm -hmm. You'll be able to experiment with different uh, types of materials that we can laser cut. Yeah, we got some other cool acrylics picked out and maybe like some fabric or something, leather. Who yeah. knows? So, uh, this is just the beginning. We're gonna actually use this puzzle that Jen Schachter designed as an opportunity to test our laser cutter that we have in our workshop. Mm -hmm. um, and so come back in a future episode as we'll take on puzzle piece number two. And again, these are all files you can find online yep. uh, at Thingiverse. The links are all below. Uh, but until next time, Sean, I'll see you. Bye.